Hi, it's Sunday again. Comes around too quickly and we are off on another day out. And today we're going to the Redcliffe Peninsula. Um, the idea is to go to Woody Point and then do a coastal walk around maybe to Redcliffe um, and then back to the car, which should be around about, I don't know, maybe five, six kilometers in total somehow. Um, we'll see, something like that. We'll see how it goes. Um, an interesting fact. Have you got an interesting fact for us? Well, I've got an interest, just some, a bit of interest for people watching. Um, we have Roadside Collect here in, um, I don't know, is it the whole of Queensland or just Brisbane? Anyway, it's in Brisbane. Um, and so that means everybody can um, take out all their junk from their house and their garage. So things like sofas, white goods, um, tables, chairs, anything you like that's too big to go in the bins. That you would normally take to the tip and you just put it out on the on the curbside and then the council will come around and they will collect it so they give you about a week to put everything out but what happens is all the neighbors drive around and walk around and go and see what junk everybody's put out and so the piles of junk <laughs> go bigger and smaller as the week goes on and the whole um you know it's the old thing of of one man's junk is another man's treasure and um yeah so this the it's recycling it at its absolute best so very little of it probably ends up in landfill it all just gets redistributed around brisbane so it's fantastic so we've got our stuff out here and um that was just a little interesting fact for you and another little interesting fact to go on that is because there are streams the weekend before which is what it is now the streams of people people go out with their trailers and they go out with their utes and they, they it's, it's like a procession going around the streets and and because of it and they go they, they also go at night sort of people who are working during it's the day it's a bit creepy at night because so, they drive they curb crawl so locally it's known as the night markets so the, the curbside collection is known as, as the night markets because everybody comes around <laughs> rummaging through everything yeah. and just picking up what they want so um, yes it's a bit of fun yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, so off we go to um, Redcliffe Peninsula. Okay. See you soon. So here we go. I just thought I'd give you a little glimpse of roadside collect that's going on. So here you can see all the bits and pieces people have laid out. A lot of old mattresses. If you were coming from another another town though, you would wonder what on earth you'd, you'd driven into. There are all these people that leave their rubbish by the roadside. Here we are at Woody Point, uh, Woody Point Beach. It's very busy today, um, but we've been fortunate enough to get a barbecue. Can you see that? Yeah. All clean. Barbecue straight off, so we're going to have some lunch before we set off on our um, on our walk, our, our coastal walk. Just show the um, the landscape where we are, where we'd be having lunch. Look at that, beautiful. I think we're going to pick one of these tables here. So for Robert's. Fat boy sausages. We butterfly them that way. Make sure they get cooked all the way through. I was frightened this wasn't actually getting hot enough, but it's um it's very hot. Yeah, you'll want to see something. <laughs> <laughs> no. I've also solved the problem of the round sausages because now I've split them and butterflied them. They don't roll. Oh, look at the sizzle on that. Mm. See it? Oh, yes. <laughs> Um, Woody Point is on the uh, Redcliffe Peninsula. Redcliffe Peninsula. It is about 50 minutes from where we live, Forest Lake, um, straight up the motorway. So it's an easy trip here. Um, we got we got really lucky. Although it's busy, we managed to get a barbecue right by the um, there's the parking in the centre of the road. 
um, that was free and then just as we were cooking the people in the um, in the shelter overlooking the water um, they left so we got this shelter here so what we're going to do now we're going to walk around the um, the coastal walk around um, we'll come across hopefully we'll come across the HMQS Gayunda we'll tell you a little bit more about when we get there um, some of it might be underwater but it's uh, it's a shipwreck um, basically and then we'll walk further round past Picnic Point and a few other places that we will discover on the way um, to Redcliffe. This is the, the seafront at Woody Point and we've just walked up to start our walk and we were quite surprised at the um, quite surprised at how shallow the water is but I'm not sure why we would be surprised because it's it's up to the seafront but it's you can see maybe how clear that water is that is beautifully clear water and here we go a still day the jetty which we're walking towards and um, some seagulls in the water there you got an action Along the Esplanade or the seafront, we have come across this artwork, uh, which is like a, a paper boat um, made out of glass and steel and, and light. It lights up at night. Unfortunately, during the day, we can't see it. Clearly, as you can see, they've drawn their inspiration from Blackpool um, in the UK because there we see a donkey on the beach. Blackpool famous for donkeys on the beach, of course. This is Woody Point Jetty. Um, we'll not walk down there at the moment because we might be a bit short of time, but um, lots of people are just having a walk down there. Beautiful day today. And here we have the wreck of the HMQS Gayunda. I, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. So here's the wreck just over this little fanceway here. Um, now I've got some history to tell you about it, but I have just spotted a gap in the fence up here. So we're going to see whether we can get a little bit closer before we tell you about the wreck. So we walked up the road a little bit further and we found the gap in the fence and it actually does come to a, a pathway. When we came through, we've got this fantastic view up here. Um, under. She's a warship. She was a warship originally, um, obviously made of steel, as you can see. And then there's a walkway further down there. So we're going to follow this path round and see if we can get a little bit closer. Um, but we've got a spectacular view of her from, from up here. So the walkway has come down to the seafront and we can get sort of pretty close up to this now, I think. I think when the tide is out, you can actually walk up to it, maybe. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, you'd probably walk on these rocks, couldn't you? Yeah. Walk around a little bit further. But today, I don't think I'll do that. The rocks behind me that you can see, Alison was just wondering whether she could walk on those to get a little bit closer to the wreck. But um, those of you who've seen some of our other videos or well, those of you who, who know Alison will know that that was not a good idea. Um, Alison and water generally, if they get close, tend to come into contact. Um, and I think if she went for a walk over those rocks, we'd end up fishing her out of the sea, to be honest with you. Okay, so we're here down by the wreck. And um, we've just come to this little backdrop here, which is where, where the road, the path we were on further up up there. And then we've got this rock face here. But I'll let you into a little secret. It's not real. This is actually an artificial rock face. And it's um, just poured concrete and then has been painted to look like sandstone that's been chipped away. Do you want to come closer and you can see it? So it's, it's concrete. It's like what's something you'd get at Disney World made to look old but very clever very effective so i'll now tell you about the um the warship so here she is here's our shipwreck she was commissioned in 1858 by um brisbane as a as a warship 
to um, patrol the waters against the enemy at the time and that was um, Russia believe it or not and um, she was built in Newcastle upon Tyne and then brought this the, the whole way from Newcastle upon Tyne and um, she was a steamship so she actually carried coal and then had to pick up coal obviously along the way because it's a heck of a journey and she was built with four um, huge guns um, which were absolutely state-of-the-art at the time and she was actually state-of-the-art very very modern warship of her day and so she patrolled the waters and then it got to about um, 1900s and um, what happened in 1900s? 1900s was a special time for her because she um, she was the first ship to operate um, wireless telegraphy. I don't actually know how you say the word T telegraphy. I don't know. Help me out. Anyway, we'll find out. We'll Google it and find it Telegraphy. out. Tele Telegraphy. That doesn't sound right. No, none of the words. <laughs> anyway, she was the first. And then in the 1900s, um, she then transitioned from being a training ship into um, a patrol ship again for the uh, during the war, the early war. Then she was bought in the 1950s as um, by the council, by the Brisbane Council, and they brought her here and she had the purpose for bringing her here was actually to decommission her in the sea here so she's not a wreck and not a victim of war she never actually saw open action ever even though she was the best warship of her time um and she was uh what's the word scuttled what's the right word scuttled um, you sink a ship yeah, deliberately yeah. yeah so she was scuttled here um just to act as a barrier to um the sea to stop it eroding breakwater, yeah. a breakwater to stop it eroding and uh, so you have these these modern flats that it's sort of protecting now it's just quite bizarre the whole story but um, there you go so she never never actually saw battle and she's ended up here as a wreck it's kind of sad I don't know shouldn't be sad if she never saw battle so that's a good thing Okay, so we've we've just walked from around the corner where we, you saw before where we were having lunch and it was um, very seasidey with the seagulls and the pier and it was very still, the water and beautiful. Now we've just come around the side of the bay and it's a completely different aspect. So now we have parkland, which is very attractive. You can um, hear that it's gone a lot windier and the sea is a little bit rougher, but it's just absolutely delightful. But So this is a completely different aspect to today walk so let's keep on going yeah hopefully you can't hear that it's a lot windier because we've got the roadie go wireless two mics on so this is the first outing for these mics now so if you have a look here I've got mine on and we've got ours on here so this is a wireless mic that I've set up to the camera um, it's got the little dead cats on to stop the wind so hopefully it'll stop the wind noise we'll find out later um, see whether it works. And we'll see how it works. So it's the first outing. Hopefully it does. Um, yeah. Yeah, Let's see how see. it goes. Okay. So if you remember, if you've seen our video about when we were on holiday, we went and collected seashells from Harvey Bay and we put them together on um, boxes and uh, mirrors and things. We've just noticed here, this is a marine national park zone where we are here, and it says... No fishing, no crabbing, no collecting. And there's somebody collecting shells with a big X through it. Penalties apply. So this shows you in, um, in this little area of the bay, you're not allowed to even collect the shells. So let's go down the stairs and see if we can show you this little bay area. Tides come in quite a way, so there's not much of the beach here at the moment. But it's rather delightful. There. Your own little private beach. It's very nice. Alison has her new shoes on today. Um, 
and uh, they're sort of like got a like a sock type thing. Um, I forgot. I think they are they Adidas. Are they, are they Adidas? These are the Adidas. Yeah. So if you come and have a look at them, you can see that the the body of the shoe, the whole thing, is like elastic. These are the. I don't know, the latest technology and sort of running shoes, but I, me thinking I was being very modern, kind of like the, the young kids, didn't wear any socks with them today. And they've actually started to rub on the back of my heel. So uh, Robert said, try using one of the socks that you had your beers in. So there you go, multi-use. <laughs> and because we're in Australia, nobody cares if you go barefoot or walk around in socks. <laughs> I, I thought, I thought Alison was actually going to put the socks on and put the shoes back on, but she's put the socks on. She's putting the socks on, and she's put the shoes in a bag. <laughs> so I don't know. I was just going to walk around in the in the socks, but. Yes, of course, if I've got the socks on, I can put the trainers back on. <laughs> oh dear. And by the way, I didn't put my trainers back on and I'm now about five inches shorter than Robert. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like this is taking us away from the, uh, the seafront walk and back up to the road. Yeah. It did bring us up onto the road again, walking past all the residential houses. And we've, we've come to a, uh, a sign that says Steps to Beach. Um, so we'll have a look down there um, and see if there is a way to walk along. Um, we'll walk along the beachfront and uh, see where that takes us. So there's a few steps down here to the beach. Give a go. I'm not sure how Al's going to go on walking along the beach in her socks. So she might have to take her socks off to walk along the beach. We'll see. There are quite a few houses overlooking the overlooking the sea here, which would be absolutely beautiful, but I'm not sure whether you're catching the sound of the ocean. You would really need to like the sound of the ocean to live here because it's quite loud. Now we're, we're walking along the beach here, it's actually quite loud. We're in a little sort of bay, I think it's echoey. It is quite hard work walking on that sand, isn't it? <laughs> well, the beach is actually like this. So every step that you take, takes you into the sand and then to the side. So you're actually walking like this. It's not, <laughs> it's, not it's quite hard work. <laughs> so let's so climb the steps there and are go some up the steps, road. Yeah, there's some steps here that take a path back up to the road, presumably. We've now come up off the beach and we're walking along the road and we have come to Margate beach. Um, this is Margate. There's a, a couple of beaches further on. Sutton's Beach, Settlement Cove Lagoon, Redcliffe Jetty, Scarborough Beach and Scarborough Boat Harbour. We were heading to Redcliffe Jetty. Um, three kilometres. Uh, let's see how we go and then we'll cut back uh, through the centre road, cut off the peninsula a bit and um, back to Woody Point. This is Scott's Point bathing pavilion at Margate. Let's have a look. Oh, it's just the showers. So yes. you can come and bathe here and then get your showers. Steps down to the water. Oh, how delightful. Oh, wind's blowing me over. Yes, you've got little steps to get down to the beach there. Right. How lovely. Everything is spotless, I have to say. On this, on this walk, everything is just pristine. We've walked along the boardwalk here. I think this is uh, Humpy Bong. I think it's called Humpy Bong. It's a gorgeous sand and sea all the way up to, um, I think, pretty much Redcliffe. Along the seafront here, there are uh, these little shelters with seats and steps down to the beach. So if you've been on the beach, you can come up and get the sand out of your feet, tidy yourself up, ready for going home or wherever. 
This area is Sutton's Beach. Um, there's a sign there showing some of the other beaches. So what we're going to do, we're going to walk along Sutton's Beach up to Redcliffe and then um, take the road back through, cut off all the beach road and go back to the car at Woody Point Beach. This is Youth Park. I think that's the name of it, not an instruction as to sort of... Isn't that beautiful with the TV. trees though? It that's, is beautiful. That's a very nice place. They are tall trees all along the seafront now. Yeah, lovely. So this side of the coast um, is known to be windy, as we, we've pointed out a few times, and it's very windy. It's still very warm and beautiful. Um, and this is why it's the chosen place for the Kite Festival, which is going to be in a few weeks' time. So we may come back in a few weeks and show you the Kite Festival. This is Sudden Beach Pavilion, which we thought was um, like a pavilion, like changing house or something like that, but it's actually got restaurants and a bar and milk club, um, milk club, milk bar, um, and they've got some music on at the moment. So uh, over in this, as you can see, the Redcliffe Surf Life Saving Club. So yeah, the uh, Sutton Beach Pavilion, it looks like it's a place to come for a night out, so chill out in the afternoon, listen oh, yeah. to some music and yeah. everything. Yeah, it's, it's Sounds like a good huge. Place it looks like it's got lots of different sorts of restaurants in it and areas in it to sit. It says the milk bar and the yeah. music and restaurants and things like that. Yeah, it's nice. That's good. We're back at Woody Point Beach now. Um, we, we walked a little bit slower and stopped off a little bit longer than we thought. Um, and time was getting a bit late, so we, we cheated and we got, we got, <laughs> we got an Uber back. An Uber. Um, but it's, it's a good job we did um, because we've been greeted by this gorgeous sunset that's coming Just move on. Move it around a little bit. Yeah, I'm not sure whether it'll it. get it because of the. Um, oh, look at that. Yeah. yeah might do. I we'll just see. Get it. Um, the water's gone out a little bit since we were last here. Uh, so we'll. we'll head off home. That was a beautiful day, um, not too strenuous walk along the beach. Um, it's lovely and it's lovely it to come back to this sunset. It's just gorgeous and everybody's out at the bars just all sitting enjoying the sunset and having a beer and yeah, it's just beautiful. Yes. Another blissful day. Beautiful. Mm.